Okay, uh, we're with uh, Jill uh, from uh, Huntress, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is quite delightful to speak to a fellow pagan. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and, and explain a little bit about your musical background. Sure. Well, my name is Jill Janis. I'm the vocalist for Huntress. We're a heavy metal band from Highland Park, California. And um, I started off uh, singing opera. When I was 10 years old, my mother started taking me to auditions. She realized I had a big voice. So um, from a very early age, I was disciplined with music theory and rehearsals and lessons. By the time I was 14, I was touring Europe and, and doing various productions, opera, musical theater. Uh, but at the same time, um, recording thrash songs in my best friend's basement. So metal has always been my true love. Uh, it's just that the voice has you know, taken me many places and given me many opportunities being born with a, a four octave coloratura soprano range. Wow, and now you're in Huntress. Now I'm in Huntress. I formed Huntress uh, several years ago. I, I started seeking out band members, but um, you know, I have something called integrity and, and I wouldn't compromise on my vision. So uh, the search lasted nearly ten years before I found um, the current members of Huntress. So uh, in November of last year, you guys signed with Napalm Records, yes. and you released Spell Eater in April. Mm -hmm. um, how has audience reaction been so far to uh, the band and album? It's been overwhelming. Uh, you know, we are five kids from uh, Highland Park that love heavy metal, and for us to gain this level of success is a dream come true. Uh, we. You know, we don't do this for, for anyone else except ourselves. We're very selfish about our music. So to see others understanding the vision and embracing that is, is really rewarding. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a really rapid uh, leap into this world of the music biz. Uh, we, you know, we've only been at this on the road now, nonstop on the road since March of this year. We first joined Pagan Fest. We're on the road um, here in the U.S. with Pagan Fest, which is a really fantastic way for us to first start our touring experience. Very professional and really awesome tour for us. And then that was immediately followed with um, support for Dragon Force. So uh, we went with Dragon Force on the road for another month and a half, and then right after that went to Europe to play Metal Fest Open Airs uh, with Megadeth and Creator, and you know that was you know, just non-stop two weeks of playing massive um, outdoor festivals with many metalheads that just, again, freaked out <laughs> over Huntress. And, and it's been really wild for all of us. We just, I think, are still really just, it's, it's surreal. Yeah. Yeah. With all the touring that you've been doing non-stop, do you have any particular memories from the road that you'd like to share? I can tell you this, uh, when we first started in March, it was a really difficult transition for me personally, uh, being a woman in a van with four boys, and a complete lifestyle change. Not only the fact that I'm, I'm you know, in such a contained area when I'm used to being so free, you know, I had to learn to, uh, to shed my female bullshit and uh, man up. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't survive, and I think there are many trolls out there that would love to see me not survive and, and to see me not, you know, follow my dreams and, and, you know, continue on this path, but that won't ever happen. And I had to make that decision to really um, become a warrior, and, um, and I did. And, and it's just been, now I'm, I'm road ready and I don't really want to do anything else but tour. But back in March, I definitely had a really hard time transitioning. It wasn't easy. Wake up call wasn't even a wake-up call it was more um, it was more a complete lifestyle change also with the voice and and a lifestyle change where I, I can't drink alcohol anymore and I, I only do shots of Jaeger occasionally and I savor those moments but I, I can't drink I don't do drugs anymore um, you know I I have to go on vocal rest immediately after the show I always meet and greet fans and then I'm in the van alone while the boys party and that's why I bring this old guy along too so my little van buddy, party time. So he's my little tour dog, and, and really, uh, he's all I got after the show. This, this is it. And then, you know, so it's, it's a lot of not speaking, changing the way I speak. I have a really good team. I have an amazing vocal doctor in L.A., and my, I have a vocal coach, Melissa Cross, in New York. 
So I have a good team built around me, but it was an, a complete lifestyle change where I had to, you know, realize that the voice rules me now and, uh, and health is, is the number one priority. So that was that was tough. <laughs> I bet. Um, let's go to Spell Eater. Sure. Um, what really struck me about this album, aside from just um, how amazing it is, thank you, personal <laughs> opinion, uh, are the various aspects of pagan icon uh, mm -hmm. that you see through it: gods, goddesses, divination, uh, ceremonial magic. Um, can you tell us about the inspiration for these themes? Spell Eater is a little tribute to magic and spells and um, the secret site and it's something that uh, you know guides all aspects of my life I've, I've been a witch since birth it's it just never had to speak about it until this moment prior to hunters I was a DJ and I was touring the world and traveling but it but I was always pagan I was always a practicing witch just no one knew about it really it's not something that I go into detail with. Um, that's why I'm so pleased that I was able to express it through my music more. Um, there, are, there, are many, um, there are many secrets woven within, within the, the lyrics of Spell Eater and also in the artwork. Um, Vance Kelly, who's our art warlock who created the cover, he uh, was so patient with my odd requests of numerology and alchemy and, and I just feel as if uh, most of the lyrics and the themes for Spell, uh, Spell Eater, uh, even the title, just they're beamed to me from another place. It's like I can see it coming along a thin blue line into the top of my skull, and out come the words. It's it's a very interesting experience, uh, very otherworldly. So that to me, um, you know, that embodies all of Spell Eater. It's a really special album that um, it's it's like each song has its own little heartbeat. And I love them all mm -hmm. for different reasons. They're all very special. All those songs are alive. Yeah. Speaking of your, your subject matter, like Tarot, for example, is on a couple of songs. Um, the Tower, Eight of Swords. Yes. Um, can you tell us about your experience with Tarot? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I was first initiated into a coven at the time when I was 13 years old. Prior to that, I was practicing magic as early as I can remember, six, seven, or eight years old with, with other children. So uh, at the age of 13 was when I first was welcomed into a coven and given my first deck of tarot cards, which is the Tarot of the Old Path. And I hold it very dear. And that's really the only tarot deck I've owned my entire life. Um, when Huntress was at a crossroads, uh, I actually fired the original drummer. I just knew that it, we weren't sharing the same vision. So there was a time that was quite dark. and. I asked the tarot card to reveal one card that would become an epic metal song and bring Hunter's success. Eight of Swords chose us. When that, when I first saw that card, it was, it was as if I was on the verge of a profound shift. Um, the, what it, you know, the the meaning behind it is, um, you know, self imprisonment with freedom attainable only if you choose to release yourself. So. And this goes for anyone, you know, any, any aspect of life. When you focus on one thing only, you, you generally will find success if you are born to do this and this is your path. So I abolished all other, um, you know, um, ambitions in my life. And I focused only on Huntress. And everything fell into place. The video director just magically appeared, Simon Chan of Artificial Army. I gave him the concept, which was also effortless because it was just the story of the tarot card. And he saw the vision, brought it to life, and it was a frenzy. When we put that video out into the, the interweb, um, we received so many responses from record labels. We had nine that were, were trying to sign us. And wow. it, that, that was stressful for us because we didn't really know how to deal with that. You didn't know who to trust, and there's so many sharks that are swimming. So thankfully, we, we have a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. I don't think anyone ever. No, you say don't that. expect it. It's yeah. the ugliest part of the business. Yeah. yeah. Um, Aradia is another one of my yes. favorite tracks, and she's a goddess. Um, is she a goddess that you have a connection with? Is there something particular about her that inspired you to write that song? Absolutely. I would say that's my favorite song in the album. Every time I perform that song, or every time I hear it, I just I, I feel it deep within my 
my being, and and I get sh chills, and even just thinking of her, uh, she's the queen of the witches. You know, I love the story. She uh, was birthed um, into the Tuscany region of Italy, and uh, was brought to to this planet to help those that were repressed by the Catholic Church. And you know, there's many different takes on on her. Um, existence uh, for the song and, and being an artist I kind of like to make it a little bit more dramatic or creative uh, I, I feel that Aradia is a very happy happy murderess and uh, loves going out in t at night and and murdering Christians and, and hanging them by trees and and has a very joyous time of pulling their hearts out with her bare hands and and reveling in that aspect of being a very happy murderess and helping those and uh, learn the ways of the witch to, to better themselves, to protect themselves from the, the evil Christians. I'm not saying all Christians are evil, you know, so many uh, people I know are, are beautiful uh, and, and they are Christian, but it's just not my path. Yeah. Uh, so she's fun and, um, you know, when I perform on stage, it's, it's duality. It's me, this little pagan fairy who loves dancing in the woods and eating shrooms. And then there's the other side, which is the horny, nasty old crone, which takes me over as well. And that's the one the boys don't like. They've seen her several times, and she comes out in the recording. That's who mostly was on the album, is the crone. She is the true huntress. So the true huntress and, and the crone really relate to Aradia. And uh, Aradia, for me, helps me become more of, of that um, warrior, I would say. I love her. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, are there any uh, particular pagan musicians other than yourself that you enjoy listening to? You know, the thing about me is I don't really like many other bands, and I, I, I even I'm trying to get over that. You know, being a trained opera singer and being trained musically and with music theory, I have a really hard time listening, especially to other female musicians, just because of, you know the perfect pitch and on and on and the attack. And I'm such a snob, but I will tell you that. Um, I do like Incubus Succubus as a pagan band. Um, I just recently discovered them, and she's witchy and magical, and I recommend anyone seek out their, their earlier stuff. Um, you can find it on YouTube, and their videos are pretty badass and uh, really spooky and cool. So Incubus Succubus is, is pretty badass. As far as pagan metal, that's a whole other genre, and I'd have to say Arcona, who we toured with on Pagan Fest earlier this year, um, and Masha Scream. She's my little pagan sister. She's just an amazing performer, and I actually learned a lot from her on the first tour we did together. So um, I'd say check out Arcona as well for pagan metal. Really badass. Cool. Um, is there is it hard for you to celebrate um, magic while you're on the road? It's never hard for me to celebrate magic, never. I always find ways, and the boys um, are very understanding of, of my pagan desires. So if I need to find a wooded area, we, we park in a wooded area, and it's not a problem. Um, and, you know, they joke about my little Tupperware altar. <laughs> I have a... because everything on the road breaks so easily, you know. My brother is building me a nice wooden one, but it's so heavy. But So I, I put everything in a nice little, you know, my altar and my crystals and, and my, my witchy tools and, and cloths and little trinkets I've had since childhood and I carry them with me but they're it's just a little a little box uh, that I that I bring along and whenever I can find a place to, to be alone and to perform my rituals I will I often do chants while I'm in the van with the boys and at this point they're used to it and they're used to the the strange vocals and things that come out of my my mouth but at first it def definitely spooked them a little and if you ask any of them now they're they they, they will tell you, you know, at first I didn't really believe, and, and now I've kind of made them all believers. Yeah. All right, well, um, I really do appreciate you taking time to talk to Songs of the Goddess, yes. and congratulations on all your success so far. Um, thank you so much. You're so welcome, and, and again, it's always nice to meet a, a fellow pagan. Um, we are also embarking now. I just want to let you know that we're on tour currently in the U.S. with Wretched. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are death metal brothers, and it's been a blast. We're going to be doing more dates up until about August 18th, and then this fall we are writing our second album. So it's it's already in the works. So this autumn, which again, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. The uh, Timonal Equinox. It's my favorite. Uh, so we'll be writing during that period in the fall, and then we're back on the road in Europe 
as direct support for Dragon Force. We're going to, as I like to say, Viking land. I've never been, so I'm very, very excited to awesome. hit all those European countries. Awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Blessed be. Blessed be.